Greetings, YouTube. This is uh, the Hillbilly Hierophant. How did I come up with that name? Well, um, in a nutshell, <clears throat> I asked my wife, I said, hey, babe, I'm going to call myself Hillbilly something, because that's what I look like today. And I said, uh, what's a word that means psychic that starts with an H? And she says, the only thing I can think of is Hierophant. I was like, that's perfect. But I think she said Hierophant. So I said, well, I'm going to say it how I want to say it. So Hierophant it is. Hillbilly Hierophant. Okay. Now, the reason I'm making a video right now is to tell you um, how to interpret some, well, not to tell you how to mark it is to do some interpretation of numbers for you. As you know, we had the presidential election last night and there's, of course, there, there is a, a controversy over the results, whether it's, you know, whether uh, Biden won or whether Trump won, and I guess there's some kind of lawsuit going on now. And none of it's a surprise to anybody who's been watching the QAnon stuff. And None of it's a surprise to anybody involved in the Sunrise Movement and Momentum and these organizations that have been planning to disrupt and do riots and these kinds of things. And it, if you're asking yourself, why well, I ain't never heard of nothing like that, I'll tell you what, uh, look for a link. I'll put a link below to the video where uh, Millennial Millie does an excellent documentary explaining it all that she released um, Two days ago? Yesterday? Anyway, but this isn't about politics right now. What this is about is helping to give some uh, insight into what the universe, what God, what spirit is thinking. No, I'm not perfect, and nobody is, but I do my best to live a Christ-like life, to be in the model of what Jesus Christ showed us when he was on earth. And I also don't necessarily subscribe to uh, many evangelicals' interpretations of Deuteronomy 17, etc., about the, the witches and the sorcery and all this kind of stuff. Because I think what that was is basically what's going on right now, where... The one side is accusing the other side of what they're doing. So witchcraft and sorcery and these kinds of things in the old context would have been, uh, if I remember correctly from my studies, would have been poisoning. In other words, it would have been magic with intent to harm or kill another person, not just doing spells and, and prayers and divination and stuff like that. Even though King James has translated uh, part of what that says as divination. So, so for those of you that would say, oh, that's against the Bible. I don't care. You interpret it your way, I'll interpret it my way. All I know is Spirit has given me the guidance and has told me to do this interpretation for you. So let me show you what, what we're going to be interpreting. This is a map from... A website called the Epic Times. The Epic Times is a newspaper out of China. But they're the good Chinese, not communist Chinese. These are the Chinese that are fighting the communist Chinese and trying to help America also fight the communist Chinese. This map shows numbers. Over here you'll see it says Biden. And what this is is uh, apparently what happened was there was a halt called, I don't know who called the halt. My my wife said that she read that the Democrats called a halt because Trump was winning. Okay, you can look at it on either side. Uh, I'm not here to tell you who's winning. What I'm here to tell you is what God has told me these numbers mean. So here on Biden's side, it says 227. The numbers underneath don't matter. The number in the middle, the 270, that does. The number underneath Trump right here on the on the right, this 88 eight or 66, six, whatever it is. And then up top, uh, the two, I believe it's two, 213. Oh, that's backwards. I wonder why that's backwards. 
Well, it's 2, 1, 3. So, I did this interpretation already, but Spirit wanted me to record it so everybody could see it. Here we go. So this is the interpretation. The two twos, two means this is a fulfillment of something that you wished for. Something that you prayed would happen is happening. And I'm feeling like who we're talking to is the believers, those that believe that Trump is chosen, is God's chosen one, or even those non-religious who believe that Trump is best for the company. So, yes, this will sound like a pro-Trump reading, and that's because it's not necessarily pro-Trump, but it's pro-God. And I believe the information has shown and God has told me that God is, that Trump is his chosen one. Unless unless God's just some psyop by some artificial intelligence on an alien planet that's trying to manipulate all of us. Having said that, I'm going to proceed like God is actually God. Okay. So it says 227. 2-2 two, two means something that you've prayed for, something that you've wished for is coming true now. Two twos in a row means it's going to be a lot of stuff that you asked for, that the, that the believers, that those who wanted to change in the, in the country, that wanted the corruption to end, that wanted those who uh, are criminals, who are continuous criminals and grifters, and, and those who are only in politics for money, that's going to end. That's ending right now. Everything that God has put in place is coming to fruition. This is the moment where the, bl the flower blossoms open. The flower blossoms open. I'm going to take a quick moment to tell you about who, who I watch and who I like. I like Dan Bongino. He's a political commentator and ex-Special Forces Secret Service guy. Not special forces, sorry. Secret Service guy and ex-police. But I also like uh, Michelle Patterson, who's uh, Angel Souls 444. I don't believe that she's on the Trump train. Uh, but a lot of what she says is, is accurate by the information that I'm getting. I just feel that she's translating it through her own fear and letting her fear of understanding get in the way. Also, uh, David Palmer. He seems to be trying to stay out of the politics realm um, in general. He's, a, he's an astrologer, a celebrity astrologer, but he's been accurate on a lot of stuff. And if you said, well, name one thing he's been accurate on, it's like, oh, well, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I'm not, I'm not a super memory guy. All I can tell you is what I know, what I feel, and what's been revealed to me. And David Palmer seems to be uh, of the understanding that Trump is the best one for the, for the country. So, so there's uh, one political and two spirituals that I listen to. Moving on then. Okay, so 227. So a whole bunch of things are coming true right now. We're not going to have to wait anymore. What, what we've waited for is coming true right now. Seven indicates... If you imagine what we've been going through this year with all this election shenanigans as a roller coaster ride with ups and downs, seven indicates the end of the roller coaster ride. So the ride's over, then it's time to get off and assess if you had a good time overall or if you won't never do that again. If you don't ever want to go through that again. <clears throat> but for better or worse, it's over. But then it's followed by a 270. And what's that mean? Well, 270 again. Two, two and seven together in that combination means the ride's over, but the fulfillment is just begun. So there's going to be something else that happens for the good guys, essentially. I'm going to put it that way. You can take it how you want. Um, and then the seven... In this case, is like there was a question about something, something that was unsure, that was unsettled, and it's finally settled. And the zero, <clears throat> in this case, zero is a number of completion, 
Uh, nine is also a number of completion. Zero, of course, also can be nothing. It can be emptiness. It can be peace, uh, solace, total calm. Um, it can be a beginning. In this case, it's all that. There's a moment of peace, a space in between, and then calm before it all starts up again. Well, what is it that's starting up again? More good news for the good guys. And this time, since it's on the Trump side, the red side of the scale, it's amplified. So it's not just the regular two. It's two times ten or something like that. So what God has deemed necessary to happen right now to save his kingdom, to save America, to save Israel, and thereby to save the light of the world, those that show people the way to freedom, the way to end slavery that's still going on in other parts of the world, including Africa, um, and of course Arabia and, and China even, he's showing that these are the lights that he has put in the world to be a beacon unto those who would seek freedom. But that light is also fire, and that fire will burn and push back and incinerate those who come to enslave. Okay, so that's the two. Um, and the one, one indicates a time when you will be asked to be careful of what you wish for because it will come true. So after this massive thing happens for the good guys, then there'll be a thing that... Maybe like, I'm kind of feeling like, don't gloat, okay? Even though, quote unquote, we won, it's not time for retribution. Uh, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You don't go judging and, and retributing other people. In fact, we open the tent up. As long as they're not proven repeat criminals who've get, been given time and time again to change and they didn't change and so they have no intention of changing and would lie just to get in and mess things up again. <clears throat> Those who are sincere about their transformation are to be given the chance to demonstrate their their true sincerity and change. Paul was a Christian persecutor. What does that mean? In plain language, that means he murdered Christians, men, women, and children, just like the army soldiers who uh, murdered Native Americans because they were told to. Now, whether they thought they had justification for that, whether they had been raids on American settlers uh, that murdered them, that brought a justified anti-Native American uh, uh, sentiment, that's not the question here. The question is, uh, those raids that happened, did those who were doing it feel they were justified? And were they, were they manipulated by false information from people who knew the information was false? Think about that. Okay. So, again, a time to be careful what you wish for. Whatever you put out is going to come back to you tenfold. Okay, this is the Wiccan read, you know, and they say threefold. And in the Bible, is, you know, in the Christian, they, they basically tell you that uh, whatever you get is put out is going to come back tenfold. And so, be careful what prayers, what wishes what thoughts towards others uh, you put out, and make sure they're not negative. Make sure they're for their positive benefit of becoming one in the truth. And then there's a two, one, three. The, uh, the three represents uh, that Jesus and his other uh, ascended masters, those whom Jesus deems part of his team at the moment, you know, Jesus from time to time will pick a team of uh, basically humans who are in heaven, who have served a great purpose, and they still retain the knowledge and, and wisdom that they learned and those skills, you know, if they were a doctor, or if they were a seer, or if they were a, a, a singer, or whatever. And Jesus will pick a team like the A-team, 
or the dirty dozen at any given moment. He'll say, okay, I need you, I need you, I need you, and I need you. And then he'll ascend to earth to help a particular person or many persons. Jesus can be anywhere and everywhere at the same time. So this is saying that Jesus and his ascended masters will, will be here en masse for many people, for everybody. Jesus is always available whenever you call on him, but very specifically after this time, he will be here en masse on the earth to help with challenges. Okay. Now, the first time I did this, I did this, uh, I switched some numbers around, but I'm being shown that this is the right way to read it now. So now we're going to do the 6683193. Okay. A lot of Christians get confused and think that 666 means the devil. In the time that 666 was written, uh, things were encoded, you know, and people would disagree with me, and there's apologists that will say, oh, no, that's not the case. But it feel, I feel very strongly that at the time, 666 meant Nero. And Nero was the one who allowed, <laughs> just like these governors right now, allowed, the, allowed and incited the, the, the sort of what you would call the equivalent of Antifa thousands of years ago uh, to riot and burn down parts of Rome, including what would we would equivalent to Rome in suburbs, not just the inner cities, and then blamed it through his uh, Praetorian Guard and those. He had special people in his government who were propagandists. That was their job. And they went out and they disguised themselves as normal Romans and essentially infiltrated groups and said, oh, it's the Christians that did this. So blame the Christians, you know. Let's get revenge. And that caused a backlash the other way of actual Romans, uh, you know, the equivalent of what we would call the middle class today of Roman citizens. That caused them to, you know, go out with the torches and the bloodhounds, so to speak, trying to kill Christians, thinking that they were, uh, uh, they were being saviors and saving their community, when really it was all a setup by Nero. Now, some today would try to point Trump as Nero, but Trump is not Nero. Trump is closer to Osiris, but Trump is not Cyrus. He's not the second coming of Cyrus. He's Trump, and he will be talked about for years. And when they write the Third Testament of the Bible thousands of years from now, Trump will be remembered the way Cyrus is remembered, uh, vaguely, but still remembered and still honored. Okay. So uh, the number that was translated as 666 uh, is thought by some, many, I'm not sure, I can't give you numbers at this point, but if you study a, a biblical historiology, you'll, you'll find this information uh, to mean Nero. And that's why. Because Nero was like uh, Cuomo, <laughs> essentially, uh, or Gavin Newsom, or whoever the governor of uh, Oregon is, who let all the rioters riot in Portland and then let them all free. Now, yes, they're not the ones in charge, really. There's, there's a, a, another hand behind it, and ultimately it's the devil. Uh, whether you believe in the devil or not, that's fine. You can just believe in a person named uh, George Taurus, if you know what I mean. Okay. And I know some of you out there are going to be like, oh, he's a, he's a Q and honor. He's a computer's conspiracy theorist. Will you admit that you were wrong when you find out all the conspiracies are true? That's all I'm asking. Will you, what, are you willing to admit that you're wrong when you find out the conspiracies are true? Or are you going to say, oh, they're lying about that? Here's the thing. You don't have to believe me. Just believe what your heart tells you. Not what other people are trying to convince you of. What does your heart tell you? And have you prayed 
and ask God, the universe, for an answer. Most of my atheist friends won't get this. I get it. I used to be there myself. And for an atheist, a true atheist, somebody who wants evidence of God, you have to you have to be essentially knocked over the head to realize that God is real and that everything you think you hate about God is what you hate about man in the church. The church is not God. Okay? God is God and always will be. The church is just supposed to be God's uh, and Jesus' representation of Jesus on earth. Of course, like all organizations like the Italian Mafia and um, I would say probably Black Lives Matter too, they were taken over by essentially the bad guys. The Illuminati used to be good guys. The Rosicrucians used to be good guys. All these secret societies used to be good guys. And they were infiltrated and taken over by the bad guys, who essentially, eventually leads back to the devil. And we can talk about whether you should hate the devil or not, or whether you should pity him. Um, but that's something for another time. So back to the numbers. The whole point of that is a lot of Christians, when they hear 666, and this isn't 666, but you might think 666, oh, one more six, and that means Trump's the devil. No, that's not what it means. So... In the Bible, when they call it 666 is the number of the beast, there's two things going on there. And, and when God gives messages like that, he layers them, right? He layers the message. So you can run the blow dryer anytime you want, babe. So 666 uh, is, um, my wife's being quiet. She, she knows I'm recording and uh, she's got to get ready for work. So I got to honor her and let her run the blow dryer. So I apologize if you hear that. And it, uh, so 666 in the Bible, show me, Lord, the number of the beast. The beast is man. Okay, Spirit is telling me um, to clarify that, no, 666 in the Bible in Revelations means man. Man is the beast. Beast just means animal. Animal just means creature. It doesn't have the abomination uh, connotation that abomination does, right? The number of, of the beast. The beast is just an animal, okay? A creature. Um, and the creature in reference is man. There were, there are people who say that it, it means Nero, and Spirit tells me that's not what it, that's not what it means. But it's interesting to look into that, that line of thought. So I'll leave that to you in your own research. And uh, I'll make videos later on that'll give you some good resources. If you've ever asked, okay, I'm awake somewhat, and I've come to the understanding that the mainstream media, even Fox, now, to a certain extent, is just propaganda and is not telling me the truth. Where can I get the truth from? Well, you get the truth revealed from God in your, in your heart through the Holy Spirit. But another place that you can get the truth uh, is the Epic Times. There's the New York Post. Um, like I say... There's a whole bunch of resources, but mainstream media won't let you know about them or they'll denigrate them and try to discredit them so you won't even bother looking at them. So I'll get you a list of resources later on. We'll do that in a different video. So finally, let's wrap this up. So with this number, so six means man, but in numerology, it also means health. So that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at men are getting healthy. And when we say man, we mean men and women, the race of men. Men, women, children, we're all getting healthier because, because Trump is in office, because God has taken the throne. Everybody's getting healthier. Health care is easier to access. It's cheaper. Health care is not a right. We weren't born with the right to health care because everybody dies. If we were born with the right to health care, then nobody would die and everybody, 
would be happy, nobody would be sad, there'd be no depression. But we weren't born with an inalienable right to health care. But making health care available to as many people as possible, and even cures to things like cancer, is one of the greatest compassionate Christ-like things that anybody can do. So that's what I'm seeing when we're talking about uh, man and, and health care. And it's six, six, two sixes in a row. So that means it's doubled, quadrupled, maybe even squared. Uh, it, it's a huge, huge amount of change for the good in health care. Okay, we have an eight. What's eight mean? Well, in Asian communities, and that's what I'm being shown, eight means fortune, good fortune, and, and especially financial fortune. So the finances of ordinary people uh, will be improved. And, and again, this goes to the six six. So those who've been sick, those who've been having chronic health issues like me with the, not coronavirus, but the uh, uh, irritable bowel and uh, uh, chronic fatigue and those kinds of things and the fibromyalgia, those are going to be much easier to treat because of all the financial cuts and stuff uh, in cost. So then we have three. So this is Jesus and his band of Mary helpers. Uh, they're with us once again um, to help make sure that the pharmaceutical industry and those who would try to raise prices once again and what, you, what am I being shown? Holy Spirit is showing me. Yes? There will be a big push by the bad guys to patent human life again. They've done it, tried it, and succeeded already, and that shit needs to stop. You can't pat patent humans. Don't mess with um, cloning and stuff. Having said that, the technology is already out there, so it's not like... <laughs> It's a whole new world, baby. It's a whole new world. That Chinese guy successfully cloned people uh, two years ago. And apparently he went to jail, but I think that he's been smuggled into Montana and is hiding there. Nobody else has said that. I haven't heard that on the news. I just have a feeling. And I could be wrong. Okay. The Spirit's telling me, yes, I'm wrong. It's closer to Colorado. Okay, so then there's a one after that. We talked about one already. One means uh, be careful what you wish for because it's going to come true. So there'll be people that you're angry at. Uh, don't, don't curse them. Don't wish them bad. There will be people that pop up that try to sully your name and, and, and make a disgrace of your family and this kind of stuff. You thought they were done and over with, but here they are again. I'm seeing like the squad, like Rashida Talib, like um, AOC and, and those folks, and others who are behind the scenes that are machinating it all. They're still there. Most of them have been wiped, but they have caused a underground movement of children who don't know any better, who think that they're saving the world because they believe Trump was Hitler all along. And those who have told them that know that that's not the case, and they have been manipulating these children, unfortunately. So we have to be compassionate when these children act out. We have to put them in jail if necessary, but we also have to give them a path to redemption. Um, nine. Nine is a number of completion. So that means... Okay, okay, it's finally, finally over. And now you can write the retrospective. Now you can look at what happened and, and, and see everything in context. Now, 23% of those who thought Trump was a bad guy at this point will have the revelation and understand why they were wrong. They will understand what it was all about. And they will... The good news is they will start things in motion to teach their children and their grandchildren things to never let this happen again. 
uh, and the earth will be renewed and restored, and the United States will be stronger, better, and freer in thought and f individual freedom for people to find their financial freedom and their spiritual freedom and their social freedom and those who call themselves Wiccans and Pagans and the trans people and everybody will be, there won't be the oppression that they're expecting. They will be more free to be who they want to be than ever. And many of them will come over to the side of light and will realize that they were on the wrong side all along and will repent. And then there's a seven. And what's interesting is seven, like I said, it's the end of the roller coaster ride. So how do you have an end of the roller coaster ride after, oh, I see, okay, so nine is a completion. An end of a cycle. So the cycle is all the election stuff. Finally, two, three down, years down the road, it's been resolved. All the bad guys have been put away, have been put in jail, have, have, have been made to pay for their crimes. So seven. There's, there's a bumpiness, but a slight bumpiness and then it's just all downhill as in a good way. Everything is easy. It's easy sailing to the end. And then at the end, Jesus is there waiting, smiling with arms held out. And does that mean that there's Armageddon there? Yes, but not in the way you think, Spirit says. Armageddon.